exercise 9.3 is a direct materials purchases budget. Microproducts has developed a very powerful electronic calculator. Each calculator requires three small chips that cost three dollars each and are purchased from an overseas supplier. Microproducts has prepared a production budget for the, cal for the calculator by quarters for year two and for the first quarter of year three as shown below and you can see in the spreadsheet here I have the first quarter uh, uh, sorry uh, I have year two by quarter and total and the first quarter of year three replicated from the question the chip used in production of the calculator is sometimes hard to get so it is necessary to carry large inventories as a precaution against stockouts for this reason the inventory of chips at the end of a quarter must be equal to 20 percent of the following quarters production needs a total of 36,000 chips will be on hand to start the first quarter of year two. Required, prepare a direct materials purchases budget for chips by quarter and in total for year two. At the bottom of your budget, show the dollar amount of purchases for each quarter and for the year in total. So let's begin. We have our required production broken down by quarter and for the year in total and we have our required production for quarter one of year three. Next we need to figure out what our raw materials per unit are. We're gonna make or we need 60,000 units in quarter one. Each one requires three chips so we need three chips per unit and that is consistent across all the quarters even for the year in total and into the following quarter so we could just drag that straight across. This then just becomes a basic multiplication. It is the 60,000 multiplied by the three for a total of 180,000 chips. This you can drag straight across as well. Now why do we do it for the first quarter of year three? Is because our desired ending inventory is 20% of the next quarter's needs. But it's the next quarter's need in chips, not finished units. So when we add our desired ending inventory, it is 20% of the following quarter's needs. So we'll need 54,000 ending quarter one. That we can drag across to here. Sorry, to quarter three. To do quarter four, we want to skip this cell and go right to this cell, which requires us to enter another calculation into the cell because it doesn't copy over. There we go. Let's fill in this column. What do you think we do here? Do not say that we add the sum straight across. Keep in mind, this is for the year in total. We need 1.2 million. What's our desired ending inventory? Our ending inventory for the year is 48,000. So it is just that entry. From here, we can add them. What's our total needs? Well, our production needs plus our desired ending inventory. So we can add these two cells together. And this carries straight across. Nice. Well, we don't start from nothing. We have some beginning inventory. The question says we're going to start with 36,000 in beginning inventory. Now what we can do is we can go right to the end and highlight that cell as well because we begin the year with 36,000. For each of these entries, our beginning inventory is nothing more than our ending inventory from the previous quarter. Once we have that, you can just drag these three across because it's the same entry. Raw materials to be purchased is our total needs less what we begin with. So we have to purchase 198,000 units in quarter one. Dragging straight across will give us our total uh, purchases of raw materials in each quarter in units. We have a constant cost per unit of three dollars. And with that we can drag that straight across as well because it's three dollars per quarter. And finally our last entry is a multiplication. It's three dollars times the raw materials to be purchased. So it is 198 times the entry in the next cell G13. 594,000 in the first quarter. We can simply drag that all the way across because we are just multiplying the two numbers above our baseline cost of raw materials. There we go. That was nice and painless, wasn't it? 
much more efficient with the spreadsheet. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Let's say that we change one of our costs. Let's say this goes to $3.10. If we enter this in, we have cascading changes throughout the entire spreadsheet. We don't have to redo an entire spreadsheet, which is why it's important to reference as many other cells as you can to eliminate the need to continually modify each and every cell. That is 9.3. Exercise 9.4 is a direct labor budget. The manufacturing division manager of Davison Enterprises has submitted the following production forecasts in units for each quarter for the next fiscal year. The plant produces seats for motorcycles. And we can see on the screen under quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, we have the units to be produced and a total for the year. Each unit requires 0.5 direct labor hours and employees are paid $15 per hour. Required number one, prepare the company's direct labor budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Assuming that the direct labor workforce is adjusted each quarter to match the number of hours required to produce the forecasted number of units. So we have to do a direct labor budget assuming that we can modify our costs to meet just the hours that we need. So here are the units that need to be produced. We need a, uh, a number for the amount of labor hours per unit. We were told it was 0.5 hours per unit. And that is consistent all year long. And even for the total column, we can drag that straight across. So to get our total direct labor hours, it's just the amount of units we need multiply by how many hours it takes to make each unit and there's our total. So in quarter one we're going to need a total direct labor hours 5,000 of them and we can drag that straight across. Our direct labor hour rate we're told was $15 per hour and that is consistent right across all the quarters and even in total. So our direct labor cost is simply a multiplication of our total direct labor hours multiplied by our direct labor dollars per hour. 75,000 in the first quarter, 5,000 hours times $15, right? And that can be dragged all the way across as well. There we go. There's number one done. Let's see what's required in number two. Prepare the company's direct labor budget for the next fiscal year, assuming that their direct labor force is not adjusted each quarter. Instead, assume that the company's direct labor workforce consists of permanent employees who are guaranteed to be paid for at least 4,500 hours of work each quarter. If the number of required direct labor hours is less than this number, the workers are paid for 4,500 hours anyways. Any hours worked in excess of 4,500 hours in a quarter are paid at the rate of 1.5 times the normal hourly rate for direct labor. So we're not going to adjust our labor rate here. We have a floor. On the floor price is 4,500 hours at $15 per hour. That's the floor. Even if we don't use it, we have to pay it. So let's have a look at what that looks like down here. All I've done here is I've replicated what we've done in the top part because units to be produced Direct labor hours per unit and total direct labor hours stay the same. All that changes is the calculation below. We have a minimum of 4,500 hours at $15 per hour that must be met every single quarter. So it's 4,500 times our $15 per hour. So we're, that's our floor price. You can basically drag that right across all four because no matter what happens, we're going to pay at least that. Now we have to calculate our overhead. We have total direct labor hours of 5,000 that are required. We got to pay for 4,500, so we're going to incur another 500 hours, but this time it's at time and a half. So instead of $20, $15 an hour, we're going to pay $22.50 per hour for the overtime rate. Here, we need 4,400 hours, but we're paying for 4,500, so we enter nothing. In quarter three, we need 4,500 hours. We're paying for 4,500 hours, so we enter nothing. In quarter four, we're paying for 4,500 hours. We need 4,900 hours, so we have to pay for another 400 hours at overtime. So there is our total. So to get our total direct labor cost at this point, we're simply going to add our 67.5 plus 
our overtime rate to get 78,500. That number we can drag right across to here. Now for this total over here, we can just do a sum. And it's the sum of these four quarters. And that sum will also be the same for the overtime rate. And our sum, total sum, is just dragging across. You can figure out which way you want to work with the spreadsheet, but there we go. The important thing here is this is closer to reality than the first, than the answer to the first part. The ability to adjust our labor force based on how much work we have is very limited unless we're using nothing but temp employees where we can let them go on a day's notice. If you hire a staff and if you have a permanent full-time staff, you're not going to get a lot of loyalty out of them by hiring them and letting them go and hiring them back and letting them go and saying, look, I'll pay you if there's work. They're looking for safety and security, and if you can't provide it, they'll go somewhere else. So there's a certain reality that you have to build into your numbers that, look, there are some months where we just don't need 4,500 hours, but we're going to pay for it anyways. And there are other months where it would be cheaper maybe to hire temp labor, but we're going to incur overtime costs. Now, this becomes important. The, second, the answer to the second uh, um, question we did becomes important when we get to Chapter 10 and we start looking at standard costing. And when we look at something called ideal standards or ideal standard costing, that the presence of a certain floor for labor throws a big wrench into reaching some ideal cost for labor. So we have to be careful about that. Again, the big takeaway from this question is that number two is a closer reflection of reality than number one is. That is 9.4.